All right, now let's go over the internal features of the heart and we're gonna get started with the right atrium. So over here, you're looking at a right lateral view of the right atrium and as you can see, it has been dissected open. So let's get started with a certain parts. First, I wanna point out at the right auricle, which is a structure that you would see externally. So the right auricle is like a triangular out pouching that is from the embryonic atrium and it lies against the beginning of the ascending aorta. Uh, also, the right article uh, lies anterior to the crista terminalis. So here's that crista terminalis. And so uh, the walls are basically roughened, as you can see, or trabeculated by the bundles of the muscle fibers of the pectinate muscles that are making up See, these are the pectinate muscles right here, making up the wall of the right atrium. In terms of certain openings, we are going to have on the right atrium the superior vena cava. So here's that superior vena cava. Uh, and so it, this one opens into the upper part of the right atrium. And this one has no valves or valve, right? Um, so there's also the inferior vena cava. Here it is. And this one opens into the lower part of the right atrium. It has kind of like a rudimentary valve. And there's also the opening of the coronary sinus. Here it is. That's the opening of the coronary sinus. Uh, and this one opens into the right atrium anterior to the opening of the inferior vena cava. And it has a rudimentary valve, which you can spot right there. Also, there is certain other features like this fossa ovalis, which is that structure right there. And the fossa ovalis is a shallow depression on the right side of the interatrial septum. So here's that interatrial septum, which is a wall that separates the atriums. So this one indicates a site of uh, the foramen ovale during intrauterine life. So when we were uh, babies inside our mother's womb, there was an opening or a hole in between the two atriums. But as we, um, when, whenever we are born, this closes and it becomes the fossa ovalis. Okay, so now we're going to go over the right ventricle. And in the right ventricle, basically this one, let me just touch it here. That's the right ventricle right there. This one communicates with the right atrium via the right atrioventricular orifice which is superior to the tricuspid valve. And so the right atrium also communicates with the pulmonary trunk via the pulmonary orifice. And so here is that pulmonary trunk. So this one is gonna be guarded by the pulmonary valve. And that's, there you can see parts of the pulmonary valve if I tilt it. This is where the pulmonary valve is. And below the pulmonary orifice. So the cavity of the right ventricle, it's funnel, it's like a funnel shaped type of structure. And it has a smooth, smooth walls, uh, inclu including the infundibulum and conus arteriosus. And I apologize, it's a bit late, I'm recording this video, so I'm struggling a little bit here, but <laughs> Let's continue. Now the right ventricle walls have muscular ridges and trabecular carnae and also papillary muscles. And in here we can observe those papillary muscles on both ventricles. On the right ventricle, since this is the one we're talking about, these are roughly cone-shaped structures, as you can see right there. And this one are gonna, gonna be projecting into the lumen of the right ventricle. And they are attached by their bases to the ventricular wall. Uh, their apices are connected to the cusps or of the tricuspid valve. So his, uh, here are the cusps of the tricuspid valve. And also by the tendon-like um, tendon fibrous cords, also known as the corda tendinae. So here are the corda tendinae. And so in here, there's gonna be three papillary muscles. If I go back, let me just 
zoom in we have the anterior which is the largest there's a posterior and there is a septal type of also known as medial uh, which is the smallest papillary muscle and so these muscles what they do is they help prevent the separation of the cusps during the ventricular contraction and on this view we can also observe two additional structures we can see the conus arteriosus and this moderator band over here over the um, interventricular septum so i also want to mention uh, since i have already talked about the semilunar valve so the pulmonary valve or the right uh, semilunar valve is the valve that guards the pulmonary orifice and it consists of three semilunar cusps so there is an anterior cusp a right cusp and a left cusp now on the left atrium just like the right atrium it has a larger uh, smooth wall portion and this one it's going to be uh, having a smaller oracle here it is um, also, uh, this, uh, um, this right atrium, it's narrow and has trabeculated walls uh, that are caused by the muscular ridges, just like in the right atrium, right, those pectinate muscles. And it over overlaps uh, beginning, uh, with the beginning of the pulmonary trunk. So here's that pulmonary trunk. Um, also, there's going to be uh, some openings. Right? There's going to be the openings of the four pulmonary veins. And here you can see two of those, uh, superior and inferior. And these pulmonary veins, they have no valves. Also, the left atrioventricular orifice communicates with the left atrium and the left ventricle. Uh, and it is guarded by the mitral valve. So that's that area. And another view, another part of this video I'm going to show you that um, that valve but anyways also in here you're gonna find the fossa ovalis there it is and it also has a valve as you can see right there okay so here is the mitral valve which is also known as the bicuspid valve or left atrioventricular valve and as you can see it has two cusps one anterior and one posterior now the left ventricle walls are also about three times thicker and as you can see here it's actually very very thick well not everything labeled here in blue is the right ventricle but you would imagine that this lateral wall that's right, what I'm talking about. So this is three times thicker than the right ventricle walls. And that's because the left ventricle has to have or um, it makes or generates more pressure to pump that blood to the body. Um, in here, there's also a communication with the aorta. Here is the aorta via that aortic orifice. And therefore, there's going to be an aortic valve. If I tilt the heart here, you can see that aortic valve. And so the remaining of the left ventricle has um, kind of like irregular walls due to the presence of these muscular bridges, uh, also known as the trabecula carnae, and has two papillary muscles. I'm going to show them to you. Uh, these papillary muscles, there's going to be an anterior papillary muscle and a posterior papillary muscle and they are connected to the cusps of the mitral valve, which here it is, via these corda tendina. Let me just show them again to you. So those are the corda tendina right there. Um, and then in terms of the aortic valve, the aortic valve guards the aortic orifice and it has three semilunar cusps. Right? There's gonna be a left semilunar cusp, a right semilunar cusp, and a posterior semilunar cusp and if i go to another view actually in summary here is that left atrioventricular or mitral valve remember av stands for it's in between the atrium and the ventricle here is that right atrioventricular or tricuspid because it has three three cusps here is the aortic valve 
the one we just saw and this is the pulmonary valve from a superior view.